So we bought a new motor home, and I would say this is definitely what one would call a mechanic special. We got it at a very good deal, but it does have a lot of little things wrong with it. It's a 1990 40CB Limited Holiday Rambler, and it only has about 67,000 miles. It has a Caterpillar 3208 matched with an Allison transmission. It is a turbo model, so it has 300 horsepower, and it does pretty much get up and go. The Limited models had an aluminum shell, not a fiberglass shell, and as you can see, this one is in pretty good shape. Other than the paint is starting to oxidize and some of the pinstripes are peeling, the body itself overall looks pretty decent. Uh, pretty much the only real problem with the outside of the RV is it has a cracked windshield. There is some rear end damage. It's not real bad. This is a fiberglass piece here and it can be fixed pretty easy actually. It wouldn't take much to fix it, give it a paint job, blend it all in. The bumpers come a little detached. It's also cracked over here in a corner. But again, these are all fiberglass pieces and they're pretty easy to fix. As for the drivetrain itself, it appears to be in really good shape. It's got 67,000 miles on the odometer. The Caterpillar 328 runs and purrs like a dream. It drives just fine. It's going to need some tires and it does have a leaky steering box, but that's nothing we can't take care of. The RV is sitting on a Gillig bus chassis and as you can see by the dash layout, there are plenty of options. It does have power windows and it also has power seats. The auto levelers are also in working condition. You can press one button and it'll automatically level itself on hydraulic stilts. You can retract those and you can move them individually if you wish to do so. It has a rear rear camera and the monitor for that is right here. It does work. It's starting to get old and it'll probably need to be replaced or updated very soon. The climate controls are right here and they do work including the air conditioner and it has a dated stereo with an equal Equalizer. It does have some pretty cool options and one of those is the couch is actually electric. It turns into a bed like most flex steel sofas but it does it with the power of a button. You press the button one way it turns into a bed. Press it the other way and it sits itself back up into a couch. It has a couple of chairs here. They do have footstools on them. All the furniture in this rig is a little bit worn. It's kind of odd because 67,000 miles is not really a lot of miles for one of these rigs. So I kind of wonder if maybe somebody didn't live in it for a short period of time or maybe it was just their summer home. Looking towards the back, you can see the layout is pretty standard. The kitchen is over here. There's a dinette table right here that also turns into a bed. There is a range and there's no oven below that range and that's because there is a convection microwave right above it. This is a newer model than what would have came with this rig, so at one time it has been replaced. There's also a built-in blender right here in the back and over to the side is a hot water tap because it has its own separate hot water heater for that in case you want to make some tea or hot chocolate or just need hot water. There's also a garbage disposal and on the right you can see the control for that instant hot water heater and there's also the control for the heart interface because it does have an onboard inverter. It's a 2800 watt inverter. The refrigerator is pretty large for an RV actually. It's pretty decently sized and it is a three-way meaning it will run on battery, regular electric, or propane. It also has an ice maker in the ice box which is pretty cool. The coach has been plumbed to hold a washer and dryer right here next to the fridge but the previous owner has obviously chosen to use shelving. He probably used it as a pantry. We have our own liquor cabinet and and down below we have another refrigerator for those cold drinks. We have a relatively generously sized bathroom. There's plenty of space in here to do all of those bathroom needs. There is a couple of closets in the back and they do have automatic lighting. So when you open the door, the lights come on. And this closet even has kind of a built-in dresser down below. Being a diesel pusher, there is an engine underneath the bed, which makes it really handy to work on. You can lift the bed up. It's kind of like the hood of a car to hold itself up. You can work on the engine. There is some room to walk around part of the bed, at least, if you need to. And there's some pretty cool features at the headboard. There is a stack stereo on one side, and it does still work. On the other side is a built-in alarm clock, some controlling for the lights, and there's also a rear heater control. The bedroom is heated by the engine if you would like to do so while going down the road. There's also a built-in old-school TV. We'll probably want to update that at one point. And there's more storage. The coach does have dual air conditioners, both controlled by a digital thermostat. I am impressed with some of the weird upgrades that this coach has. It does have a doorbell. It has a 6.3 Onan Kilowatt Emerald 3 generator that is propane-powered. There is a control panel above the door, and this is part of the mechanic special. It doesn't work properly and will need to be taken apart, repaired, fixed, or replaced. There's a panel by the door that controls the ceiling lights. It has a night light feature, which is a bunch of lights down below where your toes are, kind of like a movie theater. There is a mood light button, which turns on a bunch of lights above the cabinets. There's a porch light button, and it does have power steps, so we have a step light button as well. 
There's also tons of underbelly storage and all of these compartments are also tied to a built-in security system that came from the factory. So yes, the coach does have a built-in security alarm. Now I'm sure anybody that watches my channel is wondering what happened to the old Winnebago. Well, the 1970 Winnebago is still with us and it is not going anywhere. So keep your comments to yourself. It's not for sale. It's gonna stay with me for a very long time. We bought this rig because it has a lot more power. It's a little more comfortable and it's larger for friends and family. So some of those longer trips that we want to take, this rig will be ideal for that. It obviously needs repaired in a few minor places. It is a mechanic special, as I said. What we are going to do is have the front seats reupholstered. We'll have the dinette reupholstered as well. We're going to replace the sofa and the chairs. We're going to rip up the carpet and we're going to put down some other floor, maybe something vinyl or something that looks really nice. It's easy to clean. We'll probably do some minor updates. We'll definitely fix all the little things that are broken and we're just going to use it and enjoy it. We're obviously going to do some videos along the way of the changes that we do make with it. So please like and subscribe. Take a look at some of my other videos and at the very least, you might be entertained.